Hey, over here. No, 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 to your right, to your right. Awesome, you found me. So this is going to be a little different. Ash, over here, aren't you gonna introduce me? Matt, is that you? Man, I have kind of forgot you were there. It looks bright, what time is it? It's like 11 a.m. here in Canada. But anyways, my name is Matthew Moniz and I have a tech channel here on YouTube. Ash, what are you doing? Are, are you playing with yourself? Oh, sorry, I'm just getting bored of your jabbering, man. Hold on, is that the Nexus 6P? What, this thing? Yeah, it is. Why? Whoa, you gotta let me see it. <laughs> no. You're in Canada, wait. I think I have an idea. One sec. All right, here you go, Matt. Yo, you wanna take it? Come on, let go, Ash. Woo! Oh my God. Matt. Oh. Ow, mm. ow, okay, all right. That's a nice looking phone, no protection. Anyways, Ash, you have to let me review this. Um, sure, but you better include me because it's mine. Sweet. Sweet. So Matt, when I first saw the leaks, I really didn't like the look of this phone, but in person, I have to tell you, it's pretty nice. It feels solid in the hand and pretty hefty too, being an all metal build. And I'll tell you again, the Nexus 6 was big, not just big, but pretty wide too. So I'm glad this is thinner. Definitely one of the best big phones I've had the opportunity to use. Everything else about the phone is equally premium feeling and looking. There's a riveted power button followed by a smooth volume rocker on the right. You know, Matt, these small details are a very nice touch. I like it. One of the big changes is along the bottom and that is the USB-C port and I'm all for it. The changes here are faster charging, a reversible connector and more. It's a bit of a hassle at the moment, but we've got to progress, Matt. If we don't adapt, then we won't move forward. <laughs> the other significant addition is the fingerprint sensor on the back. If you asked me a few weeks ago, I would have wholeheartedly agreed that having it on the back was the perfect place. But after experiencing the Sony Xperia Z5, I realized just how much more appropriate that is. On the 6P, my finger never really rests in the spot, so I'm always having to adjust. And when the phone is laying on the desk, I'm still either having to pick it up or use one of those archaic unlock methods. Technically though, it's fantastic, it's fast, accurate, and a great technology to have, especially when you tie into authentication for various payment methods. And finally, we have dual front facing speakers. I really don't understand why OEMs shove a single speaker on the back, away from you. Suffice to say that these are one of the best front facing speakers you'll see on the phone this year. They're quite powerful too. The display on the Nexus 6P- Oh, Ash, I think it's my turn to do some of the talking. <laughs> All right, maple syrup, you're up. So Ash, what do you think of the displays on the past Nexus devices? They were rubbish. I agree. The screens on the Nexus phones have always been just okay, at least until now. The Nexus 6P has one of the best screens on the market today. In fact, it's using the latest Samsung panels. It's Super AMOLED, 5.7 inches, QHD with a resolution of 2560 by 1440. The screen doesn't get nearly as bright as the Note 5 or Edge Plus, but the blacks, reds, and blues are just deep and vivid. The bottom line is consuming media is a complete joy. Colors pop, viewing angles are good, and the screen is clearly visible in direct sunlight. Ash, do you even know what that feels like? So Matt, anyways, let me tell you, this phone is no slouch. While pushing all these lovely pixels, we have the Snapdragon 810 paired with three gigs of RAM. And I know what you're thinking, yes, yes, this is pretty much the standard spec list we see everywhere. But dude, and all of you, when you're running a pure version of Android with these sorts of specs, it makes all the difference. This thing just flies and it's silky smooth. I mean, where have you been my whole life? Ash, do you ever worry about not lasting long enough? Matt, what are you trying to say? No, 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 not that. I'm talking about dead battery anxiety. You know, making it through the entire day on a single charge. Oh, yeah. Well, Ash, I do. But you can feel rest assured you won't have that issue with the Nexus 6P. It has a big 3450 milliamp battery that will get you through the entire day. Now, I'm a moderate to heavy user, so it's imperative for my phone to last until I plug it in at night. I wake up at 5.45 a.m. and browse the web, listen to podcasts, and watch the odd Ash Taylor video. When it's time to plug in around 10 p.m., I end up with about 15 to 20% battery life left. Now, this is definitely an A in my books. Now, but for those who are really heavy users... Matt, 
What are you trying to say? No, 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 no. Not heavy people, heavy <laughs> phone users. Anyways, the phone does have fast charging capabilities, even though it's using USB type C, but it works really, really well. One of the best things, if not the best thing about Nexus devices is the pure and raw form of Android. Over the years, stock Android has become fleshed out and now can compete with the likes of iOS. In fact, in many ways, it could be thought as more capable. So I always find it frustrating having to deal with UIs from other OEMs when you can get a version of Android the way Google intended. With every new Nexus device comes a new flavor of Android, so this time it's Marshmallow, also known as version 6.0, and it's a refinement from its predecessor. We have some important internal updates such as Doze, but uh, Matt, wake up, <laughs> which puts your phone into a sleep state when it's resting. There's an app standby to stop battery drain from those rogue apps. There's a new permission manager, which is fantastic, giving you granular control over apps and what they have access to. The most obvious to all will be now on tap. By holding the home button, it'll analyze various aspects on the page to pull contextual information. This works well, but could and does need further development as it's not as thorough as it really could be. And what's slightly disappointing is now I need to go into that to get to Google Now. So I quite liked being able to swipe up from the home button. Ash, listen, the Nexus line has always had terrible cameras, but I'm really happy to report that it finally has an amazing one. The Nexus 6P's rear facing camera is 12.3 megapixels and sports a Sony sensor that boasts 1.55 micron pixels. Combine this with the F2.0 aperture and you have one of the best cameras on the market today. Ash, don't move. <laughs> See, as you can see here, the Nexus 6P retains remarkable color and detail, bringing Ash's complexion and brown skin to life. I've tried the same thing with the iPhone 6S Plus and Galaxy S6 and found the results to look washed out in comparison. Now in low light, the results are even better. In fact, the Nexus 6P takes some of the best low light photos on a smartphone to date, but all is not perfect. The camera app is absolutely terrible. It's as if it was developed by 15 angry Scottish sheep. It's slow, buggy, and frustrating. On that note, Matt, I'll tell you what else is frustrating, video. I really think this phone could have done with some form of OIS uh, stabilization. If not optical, then at least software based. Video is shaky at the best of times, but you know, at least the quality is there with 4K looking really well and 120 frames per second HD footage not really containing too much compression artifacts. One thing I generally hear about smartphone video is focus hunting. So here the Nexus 6P does well. If you're interested, have a look in the middle if you wanna see some more. All right guys, so my thoughts. Go over to Matt's channel to see his version of this conclusion. To me, there's nothing quite like a Nexus device. I'm sure you've heard this again and again, but it's for a reason. Having stock Android isn't just down to having no bloatware, it's the speed, efficiency, small touches like Nexus only features, system sounds, timely updates, and fantastic development support over on sites like XDA. It's designed well, performs well, and cures some of those ailing Nexus tropes such as the bad camera and battery life. We're finally sorted on that front, so here we are with the best Nexus device we've seen, despite a few curious emissions that could really make it a standout hit. Would I buy this? Well, if I could get stock Android on some other devices, let's just say I wouldn't be looking at this phone. Thank you so much for checking out this experimental idea, and thank you to Slick Raps for being awesome and lending me the phone, and also to Mr. Moners for saying yes to being abused in the name of tech. Hope you guys had some fun, take it easy, and I'll see you soon.